So, uh, Ashley, this week's AEW Dynamite, another really solid show. Of course, they're kind of gearing up to their pay-per-view at the end of the month, the 29th of February, uh, AEW Revolution. And uh, some of the matches are are kind of really coming together now. The build and some of the storylines are really, really good. Um, We're going to talk some of the highlights from this week's AEW Dynamite. And um, uh, some some of the... the the first big talking point I want to talk about is Nyla Rose. So she obviously had uh, a championship match against um, Ryu, who going into the match was the AEW women's champion. And um, Nyla Rose won the match. She she won the match firstly by hitting quite a devastating spear and then a sit out Mm powerbomb to pin uh, Ryu. And uh, it was a really good match. I thought the fans were into it. I really enjoyed it. It was good to see Ryu back on uh, AEW TV because I think one of my criticisms of Rhea as a champion was that I think she only defended the title about three or four times in her entire uh, championship reign and she was a, a champion that was kind of not on TV very much and when she was you know although she ended up on the winning end most of the time she didn't really demonstrate much of a character so the women's division I think has suffered because of that but uh, Nyla Rose going over um, I've been a big fan of Nyla Rose I like um, you know I like her character I like presence. I think she's, uh, you know, a, a good uh, big woman in the ring. I uh, really enjoy what she does, certainly kind of from the, the power and the size standpoint. And uh, I think she's got really good chemistry with Rio as well. And I know that it was um, Nyla Rose and Rio have gone head to head in competition before. Um, but uh, this was, yeah, definitely Nyla's night, her moment. She won the match, like I say, with that sit out power bomb. Now, I'm really, really happy. I think that it's going to add a bit more character to the division and um, potentially could set up a nice little rematch between Nyla Rose and Rio in the future but I'd like to see Nyla Rose versus Chris Chris Statlander I think that's the kind of the, the money match in the AEW women's division but um, th- there's been a lot of talk following Nyla Rose's win about obviously Nyla being a, a, a transgender individual um, a lot of people are saying that she shouldn't have won a uh, women's championship in a major, comp- a major promotion like AEW because she was previously a man but you know she, she is transgender she identifies as a woman um and uh i i consider her a female competitor um there's a lot of kind of you know hate and a lot of bigotry out there on social media towards nyla rose which i don't think is very fair or uh, you know very justifiable um but i'm really pleased for nyla rose i'm glad that she's the new champion there was a little segment after the match where she goes backstage and there's some of the other competitors in the women's division standing around looking you know unhappy at the outcome arms folded uh, across their chest not really prepared to congratulate nyla uh, there was kenny omega there as well nyla was saying where's the bubbly where's the party for the new champion chris jericho got a party um but uh, nothing for nyla i felt quite sorry for her to be honest with you but uh, ashley give us your thoughts on on the match the outcome of the match nyla rose as the new champion and having kind of um, a transgender individual as a, as a women's champion in a, in a major major promotion such as AEW. It's got a lot of people talking out there. So the match to start off with, I enjoyed it. I felt it's probably one of the best women's matches I've had so far in AEW. Agreed. The chemistry, yeah. the, the, the chemistry the two had, obviously, the last time they went up one and one was obviously to crown first champion yeah. back on the first episode of AEW. Um, it was just impressive, just a different way to take the division forward because as you say with Rhea she was literally on and off TV she was like, I don't want to say she was kind of like Brock Lesnar character she was like she'll be, be there some day some weeks then she wouldn't she'll be gone for say a month because towards say the back end of the last year yeah. she wasn't prominent on TV I think after Full gear. She was. I think she might have been on one or two, but yeah, we've seen a lot of we've seen a lot of Britt Baker and other competitors yeah. like that. Maybe a little bit of Statlander towards the end of last year, but they're not. You know, I can't remember too many occasions where Ryu's been a, a regular feature on a Dynamite. But yeah. Um, but yeah, carry on. Yeah, not even like to like like competing matches, like having like a backstage segments or like do little like st- like a story build about her about her career, how she got into the business. If like yes. if an avid fan is just tuning into the product, do something around that. If you not don't know who this person is, uh, no one's not a race of champion. I think it's a good thing for her to get because she can go forward. You can see her every go on TV every week now, yeah. and. Looking at who she can go up against, it's quite a fast 
well, slim, fast roster at the moment, but you can bring in challenges where you can go up against and utilise their strengths. Yeah. Yeah, there, there does seem to be quite a few um, heels within the women's division on AEW. I mean, you've got the likes of Britt Baker, who's just turned heel, um, and, and, and several others. Um, I mean, Brandy Rose, I don't know whether she's a heel or a face nowadays, but uh, and, and uh, Awesome Kong, yeah. she, she seems to have disappeared from the AEW women's division. Uh, mm. But Chris Statlander is the one that I want to see uh, as like a major challenger to Nyla Rose in the future. And I, I think those two could have a hell of a battle. I mean, Chris Statlander's mm. a, a great athlete. Um, Nyla Rose, we could, we, we've obviously seen what she can do in the ring, a big kind of powerful woman in the ring, some devastating moves. And that's kind of the money match, in my opinion. Is that a match that uh, does anything for you, Ash? Yeah, I can see it possibly being a good contender for the next paper of Revolution, but it's obviously give it get, it's a short time for it to build up a match up for the paper view, but it's obviously if you can stab it quick enough, you can get a bit rifle right build up for it. Yeah. Yeah, and Chris Statlander was one of the uh, female competitors that was stood backstage as well, including uh, uh, Britt Baker and uh, Big Swall and one or two others uh, that I mentioned earlier. But um, mm. what about the, the kind of, uh, dare I say it, controversy? You know, a lot of people are talking about Nyla Rose being transgender. Do you think that really matters? Do you think it does give her an unfair advantage? And, um, you know, although it's a talking point, is, is it? Is it? I mean, it's obviously not affected her booking because they've obviously made her a champion. Mm. But uh, does it affect the women's division in your eyes? Ooh, it's a hard one to say. It's kind of like 50 50 booking. But when I look at it, like back years ago, like the early 2000s, late 90s, when you had China be the first women to hold a men's title in WWE. True. It's like you can't, like you say saying about this now, but you look back years ago when it happens, like when China came in the Critical Champion, it's like. Different things you would have thought a woman would win a main a men's title. I mean, you've got today we've got Tessa Blanchard as Impact World Champion. Exactly. It's like you can't really contradict yourself. It's the, it's happened in the past and it still happens today. You can't literally pick and choose of who you want as champion or not. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I don't think it, you know a lot of people. I think that might be a little bit phobic towards you know uh, that community uh, I think are the ones that are making the most amount of noise but I think when you take Nyla Rose as an individual as a performer um, I think she's definitely deserving to be the AW Women's Champion I'm really really pleased for it like I say I like her gimmick I like her character I like what she can do in the ring and uh, already it's kind of lifted and elevated the AW Women's Division in my opinion I think it's definitely a lot more interesting than when Ryu was the champion I think some, some of my listeners might disagree with that but uh, I didn't think she was particularly charismatic or interesting as a champion I thought what I did like about Rhea as a champion was that she did uh, kind of uh, you know, with her size disadvantage, it did kind of add to the drama of the match, especially when she was getting, you know, um, kind of beaten down by the, her bigger opponents. Um, and I did think that that helps to bring the crowd into the matches as well. So that's kind of one good thing I'd say about Ryu. She certainly knew how to kind of uh, deliver as far as bringing, you know, bringing the fans into the match, you could say. Uh, but I think otherwise, look, and you brought up a really good point, was I don't think AEW have done a very good job at um, giving us, uh, telling us more about Ryu as an individual, building her character, telling us about her past or her background. There's not been enough vignettes done, especially when she's not on screen all that much. I think you need to do more behind the scenes stuff about your champion so that, uh, you know, the more casual fans or people just kind of tuning into AW for the first time know about your champion. And as you also said, I think we're going to see a lot more of Nyla Rose on weekly TV. So that will certainly help. But um, a good uh, match, a new champion. And uh, yeah, I, I, uh, regarding Revolution, like you say, there's not enough time possibly to build a new contender, so we might see a rematch between Rhea and Nyla Rose, which I, I, I'll be I'll be absolutely fine with if they kind of carry on where they left off from Wednesday night. I think that'll be an awesome match. But they've got a couple of weeks; they might be able to introduce uh, a new contender. Um, but uh, it, it could also turn out to be a, a multi-woman match as well if they do anything at Revolution with the amount of people that were stood backstage. You could possibly throw in. Big Swole in there. You could throw in Chris Statlander. You could throw in Britt Baker. 
Um, could be a multi-woman match, and I think that would be very, very good also. But uh, keep the championship on Nyla Rose for a little while. Let her kind of develop as a champion. Let her establish herself as a champion and establish the championship a little bit more as well. But um, I'm interested to see where that one goes, definitely. Uh, we, 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 we had a, a pretty decent match to kick off this week's AEW Dynamite between Kenny Omega... Hangman Adam Page, the current AEW Tag Team Champions, World Tag Team Champions, going up against former champions, SCU, Scorpio Sky, Frankie Kazarian. Of course, the last time these two met was on um, the the good ship Jericho, the Norwegian Pearl, out in the uh, Atlantic. Um, And uh, that was where Kenny Omega and Hangman Page actually won the World Tag Team Championships over SCU. So this was a rematch from the Rock and Wrestle Rager at Sea Park de um this was a really fun match ash uh really enjoyed this one the fans were really into it as well like i say it was the, the first match a hot way to kick off the show uh there was lots of back and forth action between both teams however the, the tag team champions of omega and page they successfully defended their titles finishing the match with a with like a buckshot lariat v trigger combo uh in kazarian mm-hmm. after 16 minutes so after the match we had the Dark Order. They come down. The best friends come down. Angelico and uh, Angelico and uh, Jack Evans, the Young Bucks, um, and uh, the Butcher and the Blade. And I think there's going to be like a tag team battle royal next week to see who the new number one contenders mm. to Page and Omega's title will be at Revolution. Um, but you, you mentioned we spoke off air briefly about this, and um, I think you said that the Lucha Brothers are going to be taking on Omega and Page next week for the championships. So this will be back to back weeks where the tag team title is being defended uh you say that it won't necessarily be omega and page defending their titles at revolution it could be the lucha brothers but give us your thoughts on what went down here uh the aftermath with all the teams coming down promoting the tag team battle war for next week your thoughts about next week and maybe a little bit further on to revolution uh the match in overall i enjoyed very well it's like it was a bit of a slow burn to start off with but as soon as it got going it built built up very well Especially sort of towards the end, so you can see said there been the double team move, the buckshot Larry in the future. It was just like brutal. It looked like it knocked Kazarian out. Yeah. Like the way he was yeah. like hugging the bottom rope after his match, it looked like he was literally knocked, knocked the clean out. Um, then the aftermath, it was like it's a good way to build up for the, it's, a, it's a normal common trait that the WWE do with the Raw Rumble, last go home show. You always have to be multi men come into the ring and you have to be pull apart brawl just to build up for the pay per view. Yeah, is what they're doing for next week as well. Yeah, and uh, I would say next week we've got uh, Page and Omega going up against uh, the Lucha Brothers. I think I'm right in saying that. And the number one contenders tag team battle royal. Now, my thoughts about this was that I'm, I'm thinking the young, young Bucks could possibly win the battle royal and go on to face Omega and Page at Revolution. But you, you, you've you kind of got a slightly different opinion. You think that the Lucha Brothers might, um, might possibly... Uh, grab the tag team gold before revolution and might be defending it against the winner of the battle royal um at the end of the month but um what's your kind of predictions i mean the tag team scene in general i think has always been quite strong in aew um but uh, give us your thoughts on kind of who might be facing whom at revolution then ash so i think potentially might have a similar scene to what had last week with adam page that he will be away where he thinks he will be able to finish off the match but he was like he would get cornered off and get lit to take it out by uh, both the Luchas and cost him and Omega the titles. Where you could obviously start to think as well, it's the week after you thought Pac versus Omega, where he could also cost pay, uh, pa- Omega his matches against Pac the deciding fall, which gives set yep. the heel turn to lead to a match for a revolution. Uh, you've got it all thought out. You've got it all thought out and... Uh... Yeah, you, you, you and uh, Kieran, your fantasy booking is always pretty damn spot on. So well, that sounds pretty good. So we've got a couple of good scenarios there that might follow through. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, either way, I think the what, Page and his kind of the drinking angle, I think is going to uh, affect his tag team relationship with Kenny Omega that will eventually lose them the titles, whether it next week against the Lucha Brothers or on the 29th uh, at Revolution against the winner of the Battle Royal. Um, I'm predicting the Young Bucks to win uh, the Battle Royal, so I think the Young Bucks will be in that match uh, against either Omega 
and Page or the Lucha Brothers. But I like your kind of fantasy booking with, you know, um, yeah, Page kind of costing them the championship next week, possibly getting involved in Kenny Omega's match with uh, Pack the week after the 30 man Iron Man match. So, uh, yeah, that's really, really cool. But, um, um, we had a match between MJF and Jungle Boy as well, Ash, on this week's AEW Dynamite. Uh, they mentioned on commentary that Jungle Boy is only 22 years old. MJF is only 23 years old. Mm-hmm. Clearly, you know, uh, th- th- these are, you know, future headliners of mm-hmm. AEW. The brand, and obviously MJF is possibly, you know, up there as the top one or two heels in the company at the moment. Uh, this was a really fun match between a, a, a beloved baby face in Jungle Boy and a, and a, a dickish heel in MJF. Um, and towards the end of the match, we see Wardlow come back to the ring. He obviously went backstage before the, the bell rang, came back before the end of the match. He handed over MJF's uh, Diamond Dozen Championship ring over to MJF. MJF then blasts Jungle Boy with the uh, the loaded punch uh, using the ring, of course, hooking the leg, getting the pin over Jungle Boy. This was a really fun match. Um, and uh, yeah, the fans were really into it. I really enjoyed it. It's a great story that they told throughout this match between, as I said, you know, uh, possibly the future prospects, the two best future prospects AEW has for the next two, three, four, five years. Jungle Boy could be the, the the face of the company going forward. I think he's definitely a future AEW champion, in my opinion. And the same for MJF, like I say, possibly the biggest heel in AEW at the moment. Um, you can't help but be impressed by these two and how, they, how they've come a really long way in AEW in such a short space of time. Uh, what's your thoughts on, on, on the match? And give us your thoughts on these two individuals, Jungle Boy and MJF. Um, and, and you know, are, are you big fans? Are you as big a fans of Jungle Boy and MJF as I have? And do you think that their future is as bright as I think it is? I'm a fan of both of them, both the guys, and I do see them being top talents in the next few years. I can see yeah. MJF definitely being champion, but not straight away. I'll say possibly in a year or two time. If he's got some kind of clause with his ring where he gets a title shot where she can cash in at any time that's a good way for him to become champion. Yeah. We, we've, we've never fully established what uh, privileges the ring, mm. uh, the, the, the diamond dozen ring as what, what advantages it has to the champion. I don't think that's mm. been fully fleshed out, but one of them might okay. be that he gets a championship match within the year. Cause I think mm. it's going to be an annual event, isn't it? The, the diamond dozen battle yeah. Royal. Um, but um, yeah, interesting, interesting. Your thoughts on jungle boy as well. Uh, he's another fresh, like young talent. Obviously, seeing the son of been Luke Perry, he's literally, obviously, he's grown up from that kind of back- background where he was known as just Luke Perry's son. But now yeah. he's trying to protect himself. So he's away from that and wants to build his own career around himself. It's literally a good, sto- it's literally a good story. It's obviously developing time. He can be another champion. He could be potential tag champions with either Luchasaurus or Marco Stump in the future. Yeah. But it's literally just building him up. In a few years' time, he can be definitely. A- contender for world championship in the future in the near future definitely yeah I, I think his match with jericho um just before christmas or just before the, the new year was was really really good where they gave jungle boy 10 minutes to kind of last the the 10 minutes to kind of stand the test of time with Jeff, chris jericho to see if he can survive the, the 10 minutes with le champion which he did and i think that kind of sets him up nicely for the future but i i agree with you i think the possibly tag team gold might be um, you know, the first bit of silverware that Jungle Boy has, um, I'm hoping with, with Luchasaurus. And I, I think, you know, there's lots of good matches you could have with that um, with, with that threesome, really. You could throw Marco Stunt into the mix as well. But I see kind of Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy possibly being a contender for the tag titles. And I, I can really visualise the Lucha Brothers versus the Jurassic Express as being a, a brilliant match that the fans can really get Ooh. into, uh, that could have a really good chemistry as well somewhere down the line. But um, that all depends who's champion after revolution and uh, but I see yeah the Lucha Express uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus kind of being a contender for the tag gold and that could you know we've not seen a lot from Luchasaurus over the weeks I think he's had injuries but he's kind of always there by the side of uh, Jungle Boy Um, and uh, yeah I, I, I think 
Luchasaurus has got a match with uh, Jake. No, Luchasaurus. No. Um, he, no, it's Dustin Rhodes, isn't it? That's fighting Jake Hager at yeah. Revolution. But um, yeah, I know that uh, they were they were kind of teasing a match between Luchasaurus and Jake Hager, but I don't think we've had that one yet. That could be something to look out for for the future. But um, yeah, uh, like I say, any other thoughts on 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 this match and uh, and uh, like I say, MJF won in the end. And it's a shame to see Jungle Boy in the losing end because um, he seems to lose a lot more than he wins, yeah. to be fair, uh, considering he's a possible star for the future. But any final thoughts on the match itself? As you're saying, with Jungle Boy, it's hard to see him lose, but you can think about the long story build. You need MJF to have momentum going to his match against Cody at Revolution, so you don't want him to lose a match going into it. Maybe have him lose the match on the go-home show if he has a match. You put that cast in doubt, or can he actually beat Cody? Does he have the mental know all to beat Cody in the match? Yeah, some good points. Well, uh, before we talk about the main event segment of this week's AEW Dynamite, it was uh, heavily promoted throughout the show. Some of the matches for next week, obviously, uh, you know, we're, we're getting Cody versus Wardlow. Um, I, is that next week? I think it might be actually because that's um, uh, a week in removed. Georgia, isn't it? It's a steel cage. Yeah, yeah so that's going to be yeah. pretty good, and that'll be our kind of first proper glimpse of Wardlow because we've not really seen much of him since he's been on the AW scene apart from being the, the muscle the bodyguard of MJF of course then we've got the tag team battle royal um, to see who's going to be the new double contender to the tag team titles we've got to Hangman Page Kenny Omega as we said a moment ago against uh, the Lucha Brothers uh, and of course in two weeks time we've got um, uh, we've got Pac versus Kenny Omega in that 30 minute Ironman match and that's the go home show uh, before that weekend's revolution pay per view, of course. So lots of really, really good matches that are kind of thrown out there for next week and the week after on AEW Dynamite. Lots to look forward to. Um, let's talk about the main event segment of this week's Dynamite then, Ash. Uh, Santana, obviously, uh, this is his first singles match in probably a couple of years. He's obviously tagging with um, mm. Ortiz, so LAX or Santana and Ortiz, uh, Pride and Powerful, however you want to. Uh, describe them but Santana going up against John Moxley so earlier on in the show Chris Jericho announced that if John Moxley could survive this match can survive his match with Santana on this week's AEW then uh, John Moxley will have to go up against Jeff Cobb on next week's Dynamite so uh, I think there was a little bit of a promo package giving us highlights of Jeff Cobb and his kind of uh, time in Japan his time on the independent circuit Um, but um, Speaking of this match, this this was kind of advertised as an eye for an eye match. Nobody was really fully aware of kind of what the stipulation was. Uh, but obviously the, the focus on um, each of the wrestlers going after each other's eyes during this match was kind of a big focus of the match. One thing I really liked about this, this before the match even started, and I said this before, uh, but every time Justin Roberts does John Moxley's announcement for uh, John Moxley's entrance, I think that's the best ring announcement in wrestling at the moment. Absolutely loves uh, John Moxley's entrance here and Justin Roberts' announcement of Moxley. Um, however, in this match, uh, like I say, it was quite an action-packed match. Uh, went about 10 minutes. Moxley got the win after a paradigm shift. After the match... You had the rest of the inner circle come down. They rushed the ring. They take out Moxley. Jericho even got his Judas effect back elbow in there, flooring Moxley. Uh, and then Jericho kind of beckoned towards the stage. Um, and and uh, the, the newest member, or possibly the newest member of the inner circle, um, came down to the ring. And it was Jeff Cobb. We mentioned him earlier. Cobb dropped Moxley with a devastating power slam. Um, and uh, I don't know what he calls it. Is that like a tour of the islands or something like that? Yeah, it's, um, his finish move is called the tour of the island because he's, yeah. he's from Hawaii. Because that's why, because it's the tour of the islands. It's based around the, I think, around the five different islands around Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then and then kind of the, the show closed with the, the group uh, turned towards the camera, posed for the camera as this week's episode of Dynamite came to an end. So, um, the match was OK, like I say, it's fairly predictable in that John Moxley was going to get the win. Fairly predictable, I suppose you could say, that the inner circle, because they were up in the balcony, that they were going to come down and rush the ring and attack Moxley. But what wasn't predictable was Jeff Cobb coming out at the very end. Um, and uh, yeah, like I say, he's, he's a, a, an impressive dude. Uh, but say obviously got an, a, an Olympic background, was in the Olympics uh, back in the 2000s. But uh, uh, 
so you see a lot of independent wrestling. I don't know if you've had the, the, the privilege of catching Jeff Cobb in the flesh, but um, what's your thoughts on Jeff Cobb? And my understanding, Ash, is that he hasn't signed an official contract with AW. Um, he's kind of still okay. wrestling on the Indies, but uh, he's kind of there. Let's say they haven't got him to sign a contract yet, is my understanding, according to the reports. So he's okay. not a fully fledged member of AEW. Um, I, I don't know if he's a fully fledged member of, um, of the Inner Circle yet, but. Uh, yeah, Jeff Cobb on AEW. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I'll get, uh, personally, about Jeff Cobb, I've seen not seen him live personally because I know he was in the UK recently. As last night, he was at Rev Pro show last night against Dan Maloney, and I've seen quite a fair few of his matches. I know he's been a former, was he's been former Ring of Honor TV champion, Neverweight Open champion, and also PWD champion. Mm. Uh, I've seen quite a fair few of his matches. It's so, like when you said he's not an actual signer for, with AEW, I thought, OK, this is interesting. I thought he would have actually been signed. Yeah, I've heard that he's not quite signed been, yet. Not quite. The way he's been portrayed, I thought he had been signed. Because originally I thought it, he might have signed with WWE. Because I know because he's got a past relation with Matt Riddle. Because they've been a tag team on the indie scenes over in the States. Yeah. Um, with the whole thing with Jeff Cobb as well, I think they could have probably got a bigger reaction from coming out if they didn't do the segment early on in the night with Jericho saying that he's, if Boxy survives he was going against Jeff Cobb if you had that segment but later on after the beatdown yeah. you might have got a bigger reaction because I think you, the crowd will probably anticipate in something to else happen afterwards yeah yeah, good point, good point. And I, I agree with you. I think that uh, it would have been more of a surprise for, you know, the viewing audience, for the uh, people in attendance if they hadn't. I don't know whether the, the people in attendance in the, the arena saw the same promotional package that we saw on TV, but uh, like I say, it probably would have had more of an effect, certainly on those watching at home, um, if Jericho hadn't done that segment. But um, and, and like I say, the stipulation of... Um, Jericho, uh, sorry, of, of Moxley facing Jeff Cobb on next week's show. That that could have been something that they could have mentioned after the matches that, you know, being as you beat Santana, uh, we're going to put you up against our newest member in uh, the inner circle, uh, Jeff Cobb. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, like I, said, I think it's good for AEW to have somebody like Jeff Cobb in. It's, it's another good platform, a big platform uh, for Jeff Cobb to make his name on. Um, a very impressive wrestler. Um, he, he's kind of been in the business for a little while, but he still carries that kind of amateur wrestling background with him in terms of his his appearance and a lot of the moves he does in the ring as well. Um, but I'm looking forward to next week's match. And uh, the only kind of slight reservation I have is that if they job Kef, uh, Jeff Cobb out to uh, John Moxley in his first ever match yeah. um, in the run up to, to uh, Revolution, it won't do him any any uh, any good really. But um, Let's say I'm looking forward to seeing what happens between Cobb and Moxley next week. But uh, obviously, we, we get, we're getting closer to Revolution as we record this. Ash, we're only two weeks away from uh, Revolution AW's next pay per view on the 29th of February, of course. Uh, some of the matches that have been announced, you've obviously got Cody versus MJF, and Cody, of course, has got to go up against Wardlow in that uh, steel cage match, the first ever steel cage match in AW history on next week's Dynamite. You've obviously got Moxley going up against current AW World Champion Jericho. That's going to be a hell of a match uh, another match that was announced as we mentioned earlier Dustin Rose going up against uh, uh, the Big Hurt Jake Hager um, are you aware of any or many of the matches that have been announced for Revolution yet I think it's those three are the ones that kind of stand out at the moment it's those three and also you've got a tag team title match so obviously we That's... don't know who's going to be in that we might have a women's title match yeah, very that's true. As much as I know, that's what six matches, six to five matches at least. Yeah, but I can't so, um, see anything else being built up. But obviously, we've got two weeks to go into it to see build up for it. There might be a number one contenders match for say the world championship. Yeah, so against yeah. The, whoever's two and second, for, um, one, um, two and third challenger yeah. the rankings go ahead and get each other to get the next title shot. Yeah, yeah. So uh, not not many matches have been formally announced yet. Some kind of hinted at, but uh, we'll have to see. But uh, 